The Tao of Self-Confidence, episode 316. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. Visit our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yapchan, and today I have a phenomenal lady on the show today. She is a travel blogger, and she's also Girl Rising Ambassador, so I'm really excited to have her on and share her story with us. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Trisha Vellarmino. Trisha, how are you today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to our listeners. Hey, Sheena. Thanks for having me. Hi, everyone. I'm Trisha Vellarmino. I'm a full-time traveler. I've been doing it over six years. And I'm currently in the Middle East. I've traveled in South America, Africa, and Southeast Asia, and Europe. And now I am discovering the Middle East. I am on my third month, actually, here. And yeah, I'm just trying to be here and feel what it's like to live in another culture that isn't mine. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. I'm pretty sure like it's exciting to just travel to places. And I'm sure when you first started, people were like, are you crazy? You're going to do this by yourself? You know, (laughs) aren't you afraid? And especially like when you go to Africa, you know, it's like you're an Asian girl traveling alone in Africa. Everyone's just like, you're, you're nuts. So, you know, it's great that you're out there just doing it regardless of what people will say, right? Because everyone will always have, have their two cents in. So, so Trisha, what's your cultural background? I'm 100% Filipino, but my mom, I grew up with a Dutch stepfather. My mom remarried, and that is why I think I was able to be different. I, I love the Philippines. It's it's just that when I'm there, I, I don't feel, I feel different, you know, because some of your friends think like this, you think like this, and that is because of my Western influence that I can do whatever I want. And I was just raised in a household like I can say whatever I want, you know, and do whatever I want and be whoever I want. And that's how I was raised. Thanks for sharing that, Trisha. I know sometimes when people know that you're like open and you say what you feel like they might see that as being rude or being like not being disrespectful exactly yeah <laughs> you know you're like labeled like oh who's, you, she's so disrespectful she's too much you know but it's for it's, me i'm not really doing anything bad or wrong yeah i mean it's just you're just being yourself you know it's different for people to say what they feel and sometimes you know other people might think it's being you know it's bad for you to do that but really it's it's just who you are and not everyone's going to agree with it so you know, it's a, it's a good thing that you're out there being able to be who you are, be able to speak your truth. And what what's your favorite self-confidence quote? Oh, I have a lot. But um, this one, actually, I just um, posted on my Facebook page like an hour ago. It says, like, even if you are, I, I haven't, um, it's, it's actually self-made. It's not, you know, it's things that I tell myself. I didn't grab it or read it from anyone. It's just like about even if you're drowning with disappointment in yourself, just remember that you are amazing in your own way. You are successful in your own way. You can find concrete, concrete examples of your success if you just look into it truly. Because some people think, oh, being successful is like this, like this. There, there is no format of being successful. Like, for example, for you, you having your own podcast show, this is, you know, a level of success. Being successful is not being as a doctor, you know, finishing this degree or whatever, because in our social framework, there is a format or an order on how to be successful. And I don't believe in that. Whatever we do, big or small, we are successful. And I think everyone should see that. Thanks for sharing that. And I totally agree with you, especially, you know, being in Asia, there's always a certain structure, this rigidity of success. It's like if you don't have the car, the house, the wife or husband or the money, then you're not considered successful. And success can be many things, whether it's the first pound you lose or, you know, the first, you know, pace you start running in, you know, any anything that you've done, you've never done before is success, no matter how big or small they are. And I think we forget to celebrate all these small wins. We're so focused on the big win. And if we don't get it, we end up feeling bad for, you know, bad about ourselves, thinking what's wrong with us when really there's nothing wrong with us. You know, it's just 
people's perceptions just get in our heads and we just think, oh my God, they don't think I'm successful because I don't have this, this and that. But you know, for me, seeing you traveling the world, like that's amazing. That's successful. I mean, so many people would love to do that, right? Yeah. But true. And, and, you know, there's some people might think that's, that's weird. That's stupid. That's, but you know, everyone has their own definition of success. I really love, you know, that quote that you made, especially that, you know, something you made. I always love when women come up and come up with their own quotes. I think it's amazing. So thanks for sharing that. And sure. in your own words, how would you define self-confidence? I think it's more of be accepting yourself first because it took a lot of time for me to accept that I am different. You know, I was, I was in fashion school. <laughs> I find it funny because I, 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 I was so different back then. I was, you know, buying clothes all the time because I was in fashion school. I need to look different. I need to look like fantasy all the time. And I was working in fashion magazine. So. And then I realized like, what? I didn't. I don't feel empowered. I don't feel confident, even if I have these expensive heels and stuff. And I just, I just started wearing what I wanted, you know, like I wore the, all those clothes because that's the environment I was in. And then I just started, okay, I only want to wear a shirt or a, a jeans or some slippers and I'm fine with that. And then I just started feeling good about me. Like, oh, this is, this is way better. I feel more empowered. I feel like myself. So for me, self-confidence is being able to be okay of who you are, good or bad. You know, I've accepted anything about me, good or bad, and I feel really good. Thanks for sharing that. You know, it's great that you're able to realize that, you know, especially as women, we're so hard on ourselves. You know, it's like, yeah. You know, it's like, oh my gosh, I have a pouch on my stomach. I, f- I look terrible. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just yeah. not, not realizing, you know, it's, it's still beautiful. Just accept it and just be okay with it because there's so many women who can relate to it. And also when, you, when you're okay with that, for example, the pouches you were saying, people actually see that, oh, she, she's, she's beautiful because she's so confident. She's okay with who she is as opposed to being conscious or, you know, stuff like that. People, pe- what you feel... People would always feel it. What you want people to see, they don't see that. They see another side because you're not being who you are. Totally. And, you know, I I totally agree with that. Just like the more authentic we are, the more people are going to be drawn to you and just realize, like, you know, it's okay to be that way. So thanks for sharing Mm -hmm. that. And Trisha, what was your life like before your discovery of self-confidence? Oh, my gosh. It it was, I don't know. It, It was stressful. You know, you, you feel like you're being electrocuted in your back all the time. You cannot go out with, you cannot really go out with, you have to prepare to go out. I, I don't, I, you have to think when you go out. And I don't, I didn't like that feeling that why do I have to think about this? You know, why can't I just go out there and just be me? Why? And I think it's because mostly the setting, the environment where we are in, I am not I'm not saying you know the Philippines is a bad environment but there is a kind of culture in some countries that okay you should be like this you should be like this and that pushes us to be you know to join the bandwagon and when I left when I was in different places you know people don't know me I don't care I can be like this I can be whoever I want and I discover that it's okay it's okay to be yourself and it's okay to accept being different Thanks for sharing that. And, you know, I totally agree with you. Like, the Philippines is a great country, and, you know, I love my family here. Mm-hmm. But sometimes, you know, they expect certain things, right? Like, you yeah. know, I'm here, and the first thing they'll ask is, like, why aren't you married yet? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, why aren't you married yeah. yet? It's like, well, it's not important to me, right? I mean, yeah. it's not a big deal. I mean, if it comes, it comes. It's not the end of the world. But people here are mm-hmm. so afraid if you don't get married, something's wrong with you. This is what they say that I'm disrespectful because I always say bad about the Philippines, whatever. I'm not saying something bad about the Philippines. I'm I'm describing the status quo. Why would I say something bad about the Philippines? All the people I love, 90% of the people I love are there. I, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't leave if something doesn't make me feel right. But, you know, it's good to visit and the best thing about my family and friends is I get that support system. I think in order for you to be really, really confident, you have to have a very positive community and support. 
you know. I totally agree. And so, you know, it's great that traveling helped you become that person you are. I mean, it, I think traveling is like the greatest experience any person can can have in their life. Just even going yeah. by themselves, being able to learn more about what they, who they are and what they're capable yeah. of. You know, mm-hmm. just being really okay with themselves. I mean, I've been yeah. to places on my own and it's just like, some people might think I'm, you know, I'm lonely, but I'm not. It's just I really love, you know, people have to learn to be in love with their own company. If not, how, are they, sure. how can they accept other people, right? And mm-hmm. because of you traveling, I mean, what's your life been like now? Oh, very, every day is different, you know. Last week, the end of October, it was my first month being in Tel Aviv. I'm in Tel Aviv now in Israel. And I was just like, wow, that was a lot of things. And I, I look at myself now as opposed to when I was in Africa, when I was in South America for a long, I was in South America for three and a half years, my longest trip ever. You know, I thought I was, I would be that same person. And here I'm just becoming different and different and deeper all the time. Thanks for sharing that. And, you know, it's great you get to do, you know, you get to travel. I mean, it's, I mean, I'm sure everyone's just like, how did she do it? How did she do it? So, (laughs) yeah, for sure. I mean, it's like everyone's lifelong dream, which is amazing. So, congrats to that. And, Trisha, you know, to the woman who's listening to your episode, she may be in her own journey of self confidence. What would be that one tip you would give to her? We are unique individuals who experience different things every day. Like, for example, when, We started this interview the moment I opened my computer, the moment you opened yours, we see different things. Because the thing that surprises me is when people write to me, like, how do I do it? How do I do it? It's We don't have the same life stories. We don't see the same things every day. It doesn't necessarily mean that traveling will apply to you. Or, you know, it could be other things. You just, I think what I wanted to say is just don't base your life if you're depressed or if you're going through something you just don't look at other people's lives and apply it to yours like have your own discover your own go through it go to the depression go to you know the pain or whatever you're going through don't skip it because a lot of us skip it you know "Ah, i'm okay and in the end it will backfire and they don't really realize that you know they have their own stories to tell they have their unique lives and it's it's weird for me when people ask me like oh how should i travel and you know what if it doesn't work for you you should try the things that will work for you but of course i didn't say don't try traveling but my point is we are all different and we lead different lives we see different things the moment we wake up we are all different there is no one on this earth that has the same life as yours Thanks for sharing that. And I know as women too, especially as Asian women, we're so great at the compare game. Mm -hmm. So we we have to learn to look at ourselves and be like, you know, we can't compare our chapter one to their chapter 20. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, we don't know what they've they've been through. We don't know all the hurdles and the obstacles they've been through to be where they are today. And, you know, we are are all on our own journey and it's it's amazing. We have to love the process. So I really love... it yeah. Like, right, Sheena, do you, have you met someone who has the same exact life as yours? No, no. of course. <laughs> I mean, all of us have our own. There's similar situations, but we all have our but, own story yeah. to tell. So, I, you know, yeah. I really love, you know, the um, tip that you mentioned. And if our listeners wanted to get to know a little bit more about you and your travels, is there any links or social media profiles we can connect with? Yeah, my website is www.ps. I'm on my way.com and all the social media links are there. But if you search actually PS, I'm on my way everywhere. It's the same. You can find it easily. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And to our listeners, if you want to connect with Trisha, you can also head on over to the Tao of selfconfidence.com and search for Trisha's name. Her show notes will pop up along with everything else we talked about. And I just really want to thank Trisha for taking the time to share her story with us and tips on self-confidence. So thank you so much, Trisha. Thank you for having me, Sheena, and hello to everyone back in the Philippines. Not a problem. It was an honor having you on the show. And to our listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of Another Amazing Woman's Journey to Self-Confidence, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Thank you for tuning in to another amazing episode of the Tao of Self-Confidence. Want to learn how you can use podcasting to market your business? Download your free report by visiting our website at thetowofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits.